This is the GIS News for Friday, August 16th, 2024. I am Prisanne Mitchell. In the headlines, CARICOM ambassador says shift in mindset is required to maximize on benefits as an organization, and Ports Authority calls for urgent collection of barrels to make room for influx of relief supplies, plus a look at Grenada's preparations for the 2024 Paralympic Games in Paris and other sporting highlights. We'll have details of these stories and more when we return. Grenada, it's time to celebrate. Our Olympic champions are coming home and we want you to join us in welcoming them. On Saturday, August 17th at 2 p.m., come down to the Maurice Bishop International Airport for the official welcome and the opportunity to meet our champions. As as then on Sunday, August 18th, get ready for an island-wide motorcade and celebration event. The motorcade departs Montrouge Plainfield from 10 a.m., heading up the western side of the island and down to the east, gathering at 4 p.m. at Lassages Plainfield for a grand celebration. Come out in your national colors, wave your flag high and let's celebrate jubilee style don't miss this chance to show our champions how proud we are grenada let's celebrate our heroes in true jubilee spirit welcome back Grenada's ambassador to CARICOM, His Excellency Aaron Moses, says now is the time for Grenada and other member states to engage the world and seek survival beyond its borders. He was addressing recent decisions and recommendations made during the recently held 47th regular meeting of the heads of government in Grenada. During an interview with the Government Information Service, Ambassador Moses said CARCOM is pushing a digital transformation agenda which will present more opportunities for jobs and skills development than limitations. However, there must be a change in mindset to accept and adopt the move. The opportunities, in my view, certainly eclipses the limitations. Uh, we have to begin to see that in its proper context, a change of mindset and seeing future survival as beyond our borders, being able to engage the world. And that is what digitization, and that's an important thing that was discussed, we're going to talk about that, allows for. You can sit here and provide goods and services anywhere in the world. As you know, you can go in the net and say, I require X skills to do X, Y, and you have hundreds of different persons sending bids and you can assess and review and choose and that's the era in which we live so we have to change our whole mindset and approach and so far like i said there's minimal reasons to fear the world economy is driven by digitization however there needs to be a paradigm shift in each member country and together as an organization he highlights the skills training components of the digital transformation agenda the, the full parameters of that is still being worked out, but that's a very important initiative that is, is driven by the Prime Minister as the lead Prime Minister for ICT. Um, also included in that package is a digital transformation of our health sector. Okay. Um, how we can utilize our technology to deliver medical services so you can have an expert sitting in some part of the world who can perform operations and guide operations if you have the the digital uh, platform and network um, the whole issue of how do we expose our adult population to the whole question of artificial intelligence what is it what is the implications so there's a lot of information right. dissemination and sharing the question of cyber security 
According to Ambassador Moses, more emphasis will be placed from a CARICOM level on preparedness and skills development. When you have similar structures, similar size economies, I'm not seeing that significant movement of persons across you know, borders. Um, certainly, if skills are required, people are going to move to those skills. But if it does not exist, it's a benefit to the country. So, so far, the experience of the OECS leaves no room for fears why people should be scared of people coming in and take, take their particular jobs. Ultimately, we want to increase our levels of effectiveness, levels of productivity. And to do that, we have to acquire as much protein and skills that the societies require. And so we need to be focusing more on preparedness, acquiring the skills that, you know, we perceive, we see that future societies are going to need. You know, and if you prepare yourselves, I don't think there's any reason why we should be scared, you know, of, you know, a particular mass movement. The Grenada Ports Authority is making an appeal for individuals with barrels and personal effects to collect as early as possible within the free storage period of five days to accommodate the influx of relief aid. Storage space at the facility is limited and it has been made more acute due to the inflow of barrels into the country. The authority encourages individuals to contact their agent to ascertain if the container has been stripped and is ready for pickup. Storage rent will be applied after the free storage period of five days has expired. Steel pan lovers and masqueraders will converge at Port Highway on Saturday, August 17th for the 2024 edition of the Real Steel Last Lap Jump Up from 6 p.m. The event into its 10th year is organized by the Republic Bank Angel Harp Steel Orchestra in collaboration with National Lotteries Authority, Grenada Steel Band Association, Mass Bands Association and Spice Mass Cooperation. Manager of Angel Harps, Brian Sylvester, told GIS the event is an opportunity for revelers to wrap up the Spice Mass season to the sweet sound of steel pans. The intent is to have a last lap jump to steel ban um, from the Port Highway to the Carnage and back, um, giving masqueraders one last chance to, you know, portray whatever they wanted to portray, whether it's old mass, whether it's whether it's job, whether it's fancy mass, whether it's Monday night, you know, just put on your costume and you know, come free up to some steel band music. You know, we hope everyone come out. You know, like I said, put on whatever you had. Uh, whether you, whether you stood on the side and watched carnival, you know, come and, and jump with us. He is optimistic that the initiative will help to keep the culture of steel pan alive for future generations. I think the standard was good. Um, you know, we need to do more to help the smaller bands to attain that standard. I think there's a MOU that's in place that's going to be, hopefully the Steve Association can get some movement on in conjunction with the, with, with, with the government so that we can help these bands to create, you know, to close the gap really um, towards the, the, the larger, more successful bands. And I think that's one thing too will also help in the development of the Steban, Steban movement. Sylvester called on the relevant authorities to invest more in steel pan and promote it as other aspects of spice mass. But we need, you know, some further assistance from other entities like, you know, um, the Spice Mass Association. We've been trying to get this event listed on the calendar, calendar of events for Spice Mass, but has not been a, a, up to this point. You know, the site it's not a Spice Mass, you know, um, sanctioned event to some to some extent. But you know, it, having it having it as a last lap, having you still have a lot of visitors here at last Saturday after Carnival. You know, I could only see it growing. You know, from strength to strength, with you know, with some injection from additional parties. The last lap event will commence from 6 p.m. from Port Highway to the Carnage and back. The news will return after the break. Prepare for hurricane, prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof flashlight candles. We'll do kin stuff, garbage back, first aid kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. 
Welcome back. Gravel Concrete and Emulsion Production Corporation, a statutory mining organization, says they are able to meet the needs of the construction sector. On Friday, during an exclusive interview with the GIS Otto Oliver, General Manager of Gravel Concrete and Emulsion Production Corporation, highlighted the fact that despite some past challenges, the corporation is today in a better structured position to honor the request from the construction sector. The company was established by an Act of Parliament, Act 43 of 1986, by the government of Grenada to manage the exploitation of naturally occurring occurring aggregate materials on the island. Before, there was a shortage in that sense that where you find trucks would have to come and wait the whole day for a load of, of gravel, especially the three-quarter gravel. Now we are past that. You know, we have since been able to supply. We have two customers that we supply in Kariaku, you know, every other week. So we have, and we are able to meet our demands with, with, with great ease now. Um, before, there was no stockpile of the three-quarter gravel, for instance. I mean, three-quarters is, is a critical product for us here. Um, the most sought after, you know, the, the, the quickest selling one, you know, kind of thing. Everybody uses it in, in, in their concrete. Um, so it, it was a little bit ticklish in the first instance, but we are past that hurdle now. So we are able to maintain a, a, a steady, you know, stockpile. Whereas before we, we were, you know, basically mining and as fast as you mine, you sell. But now we are able to maintain a stockpile of over 6,000 tons on, on any, any given day. Oliver said that quality grade of the aggregates is very important to ensure that contractors are meeting the required stipulated standard to ensure durability of completed construction projects. We, we have since reopened our internal lab, you know, before we, we used to have to rely solely on the Bureau of Standards to do all our testing. But since um, we have reopened our internal lab, so we have people in-house that stays on top of, you know, stays on top of that. We do all our testings now. I mean, we still use the Bureau of Standards for for instance, you know, big pores, we are doing the Molinier Road project. So for projects like that, we would still have an independent person doing the testing for us so we could have some, you know, some kind of comparison. And in case of anything, there is an independent person to, to, to rely on. Um, that is, is, is the most critical aspect, you know, the testing and staying on top of, of that. So we have our in-house guys that does that. Um, for instance, when we when we doing our ready mix concrete, the be, even before we start batching, the, the lab technicians will look at the materials, you know, to if in case there there is any changes to be made with with, with the mixed designs. Minister for Karakou and Petit Martinique Affairs, Honorable Tevin Andrews, assured residents that the government's rebuilding and restoration efforts continue as they move toward bringing the island to a state of normalcy. Since the devastation caused by Hurricane Beryl on July 1st, government has implemented several measures toward restoring the island. The hurricane destroyed 80% of the island's housing stock, leaving hundreds of families displaced. Minister Andrews assured them that no one will be left out of the rebuilding efforts. He said once the residents remain united and empowered, the rebuilding and restoration process will be expedited. In the midst of darkness, there shall be and will be light. Amen. The going may be tough, it may appear to be long, but you have my assurance that we will rebuild better and stronger. And that no one, I want to put this out there, and I want you to hear me, no one, absolutely no one, will be left behind. And if there was ever a time that we should be united, this time is now. Yes. Pulling ourselves together, you see how we came together 
and we defended Sassi. You see how we came together and braced to support Sassi and Shanda and two blacks and the others? That's what's needed now. Because in unity, there is strength. And when we do that, we will be able to regain, sorry, rebuild even faster than we think about it. So the Sandals Foundation, in collaboration with Great Shape Inc., Grenada Dental Association, and the Ministry of Health, have partnered once again to offer dental services to the public. Over 700 volunteers every year with Great Shape Inc., 1000 Smiles Dental Project, to provide free access to dental care and education to families in the Caribbean. The Sandals Foundation's public relations manager, Delion Forrester, tells us about the upcoming dental clinic. The Sandals Foundation, Great Shape, Grenada Dental Association and Ministry of Health invites the general public to our dental clinic to be held at the Westerhall Secondary School and Corinth Government School from this Sunday to Thursday and next week, the following Monday to Friday at both locations. During the second week, which runs from Monday, August 26th to 30th, the SEAL Grenada program will be running simultaneously. All of these services will be available for the two weeks. That is from Sunday the 18th to Thursday the 22nd at Wester Hall. Uh, also continuing again at Wester Hall, the clinic continues for everyone on Monday the 26th to Friday the 30th. However, during that second week, the SEAL Grenada program only will be conducted at Corinth. During our second week, the week before school opens, Monday the 26th of August to Friday the 30th, we're inviting all parents to bring their children to our Sealant mission at Corinth Government School. Bring the kids, let them get their teeth sealed and protected to prevent decay so they can smile brightly and be confident in the new school year. No appointments are required during the period. This is the GIS News. When we return, Caribbean Examination Council is changing its approach for 2025. Grenada, it's time to celebrate. Our Olympic champions are coming home and we want you to join us in welcoming them. On Saturday, August 17th at 2 p.m., come down to the Maurice Bishop International Airport for the official welcome and the opportunity to meet our champions. Then on Sunday, August 18th, get ready for an island-wide motorcade and celebration event. The motorcade departs Montrouge Plainfield from 10 a.m., heading up the western side of the island and down to the east, gathering at 4 p.m. at Lassages Plainfield for a grand celebration. Come out in your national colors, wave your flags high, and let's celebrate Jubilee style. Don't miss this chance to show our champions how proud we are. Grenada, let's celebrate our heroes in true Jubilee Spirit. Welcome back again. CXC Registrar and Chief Executive Officer Dr. Wayne Wesley met with several education stakeholders and Ministry of Education officials at the Public Workers Union building in St. George. These meetings followed Wesley's participation in the 47th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM in Grenada. Annette Moore has the details in this report. On July 31st and August 1st, CXC Registrar and Chief Executive Officer Dr. Wayne Wesley met with several stakeholders including educators, parents, and Ministry of Education officials at the Public Workers Union building in St. George. These meetings followed Wesley's participation in the 47th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM in Grenada. The key purpose stems from our mission which says that we develop the human capital of the region through partnership for global competitiveness and so the engagement of our critical stakeholders is paramount for us as we seek to communicate and have dialogue on the new strategic direction of CXC and to get their input on how we can collectively advance the development of the human capital of the region. 
Wesley, who has been the CXC registrar for the past five years, notes that CXC has updated its philosophy and will be rolling out new approaches, strategies, and products to improve student competence, chances at certification, and overall performance. Our focus will now be on measuring competencies, assessing competencies. Students ought to demonstrate what they can do uh, because it is important that it's not just knowing, but what do you do with what you know. Those competencies, critical thinking, problem solving, teamwork, uh, would be critical collaborative uh, abilities will be critical in the assessment going forward. We are developing at CXC what we call a skills and competency framework or skills and competency metric that will allow us to be able to assess in a more meaningful way the competencies students would have acquired. So CSEC and CAPE uh, are our intermediate qualification. What we are working on right now on the team, I have a special project team working on the development of CXE micro-credentials that will now look at assuring that we can assess uh, progressive achievement of students as they move through the education system and so the CTEC as we call it now we are still working on it but uh, it will come out later on I will not say much about it other than that qualification will be stackable and it will be non-terminal once it is obtained you can still use it to build your qualification towards uh, our intermediate qualification so but it will be specific to skills we talk about the skills and competency matrix earlier and what we are trying to do is how do we validate the competencies students have acquired the skills for the work that they are seeking to pursue whether or not they want to do further studies or enter employment how do we allow for the private sector to understand that this student has the requisite skills and competencies to perform the task that they are required to do. The CXC registrar explained that CXC is now embracing the use of artificial intelligence and creating a policy to govern this. Wesley also says CXC is working on the configuration of an AI chatbot that will use authentic sources of information, particularly regional information. We have recognized that once we put the proper safeguards in place for academic integrity, you know, moving, to, allowing students to understand what plagiarism is, and once we guard against that, once we allow for student cognitive intellectual capabilities to be developed and not stymied because they become over-reliant on the technology. Once we put a system in place where the information used by the artificial intelligence is verifiable and factual, then it creates an environment that is enriched with information, guided by teachers of course, to ensure students are acquiring the requisite competencies and skills to perform in industry. Regarding secondary school students' performance in mathematics, CXC is concerned about the effect on former students who did not achieve a pass in mathematics being locked out of other opportunities resulting in poor economic realities. The performance in mathematics that is really of concern. The data I shared with you is from 2018 to 2020 regionally that we have not been able to surpass 60% performance in mathematics across the region. In fact, we have not gone past 55% from 2018 to 2023. One of the fundamental things we have recognized, even coming from the primary school system, is the need for greater focus on literacy and numeracy. Those foundations would be critical for, the, for students to be able to learn anything else. And if we get that right, I know the need for us to be rounded is quite um, strong, but at the same time, if we are not achieving what we need to achieve, then we need to step back and put emphasis where it is needed. And I think it is great high time for us now to put a lot more emphasis on the acquisition of literacy and numeracy by our students. And by doing that, anything else can be learned. We are developing at CXC literacy and numeracy standards that will be utilized to assess and monitor the system. This will not be a high-stake examination. It's really diagnostic in nature, but at the same time providing a way to assess and monitor students as they move from stage one to stage four. In this case, it can be from first form 
to third form just to make sure by the time they get to their final year, they are competent enough, confident enough in English and mathematics to take on the advanced task. Wesley says CXC is doing a secondary education system evaluation and will also be embarking on the use of percentiles instead of just traditional ranking in conjunction with the remedial strategies to ensure improvement in students' performance. And that aside, the registrar commended Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell's presentation at the 47th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM in Grenada. The, the, the thing that was special for me in the CACO meeting, your Prime Minister, um, PM Dickon Mitchell, actually put forward a plan for development of the digital infrastructure and skills within the Caribbean region. And I actually met with him and told him that I would love to be a part of that because I think it is important that if we want to benefit from AI the way we have been speaking and the fact that CXC has been putting forward over the years e-testing and electronic assessment, then having the digital platform to do that is paramount. For GIS News, I'm Annette Moore. Thank you, Annette. Lieutenant Colonel Nigel Noel of the Grenada Cadet Corps is making a clarion call for more involvement of adults within the structure of the Cadet Corps. Lieutenant Colonel Noel made the comment at the commissioning ceremony of cadet officers held at the Governor General's residence on Thursday. This is an opportunity that we use to order to give further responsibilities to adults in the organization and not, not just an occasion to wear a uniform and to be uh, displaying it all over there without any responsibilities. The, the purpose, uh, we are tr growing organization and with the growth in the organization, we need more adults to be involved in the leadership of the young people particularly young people, especially with the issues of today, with the children becoming more involved in the violence. We are hoping that this organization would be able to curb that. So we are encouraging parents to have their, parents, their children get involved in organizations, even if not the credit code, but any youth organization that assists with the discipline and so of children within the schools. With two weeks left of the summer vacation for secondary school students, the lieutenant is informing parents and guardians that recruitment of new officers will commence in the Michaelmas term. So we want to encourage parents to use that occasion to bring their children on board with the Grenada Carico in this recruitment stage. It is a, a organization that is operates out of the secondary schools between form one and form five after that you could go also be as a member of time cc and then you could move on as the adults who are here today to become an adult officer within the ranks of the grenada cadet corps some people have the opinion that cadeting is about marching up and down but that is not it we do several community-based um, activities. We also, as the country would realize, the involvement of the Cadet Corps in the rebuilding of Grenada after the passage of Hurricane Barrel. We had cadets and adults in Karaku. We had cadets and adults at NADMA preparing packages to send to both Karaku and St. Patrick's as part of the rebuilding process. So these are good reasons for us to be involved in this organization so that we can assist in building that well-rounded citizen. This is the GIS News. When we come back, Sherry and Noel tells us about Grenada's preparations for the Paralympic Games in Paris next week and other sporting highlights. Are you thinking about buying a vehicle? Did you find a company on social media? Stop. It may be a scam. Look out for the following red flags. Is the price lower than other dealers? Does it seem too good to be true? Are you sending the monies to the US even though you are ordering the vehicle from Japan? Does the address on the invoice match the address on the payment details? 
Are conversations limited to WhatsApp text? Is there a sense of urgency placed on you by the seller? You are about to be scammed. Do not take your hard-earned cash, or even worse, a loan, to send to these scammers. Once the money leaves Grenada's shores, you are not likely to get it back. Consider buying a vehicle already on island from an individual or a car dealer. Beware of these scammers. If in doubt, it's best to stay out. A message from the Financial Intelligence Unit. Welcome back. Two Grenadian athletes are preparing to represent the island at the 2024 Paris Paralympic on August 28th, and the Grenada Chess Federation has selected a 12-member squad to participate in the upcoming 45th Chess Olympiad in Budapest, Hungary. Let's join Sherry and Noel for more details. Grenadian athletes Aishana Charles and Tyler Smith are gearing up to compete in the Paris Paralympic on August 28th in France. The two field event competitors are hoping to make a big impact in the respective competitions. This is Aishana Charles' second Paralympic Games following her debut in the 2021 Tokyo Games. She will compete in the women's F46 javelin and F46 shot put. Tyler Smith will participate in the men's shot put F43. Both athletes are being coached by IWF certified level 1 coach Bassanio Nicholas. Nicholas spoke with GIS Sports via telephone on Friday on the athletes' readiness for the Paralympics. We are well set and ready for competition and all is well health-wise with our athletes. All in all, we are prepared to go to Paris and do our best. I would personal as coach for the for the team. I am looking for personal best distances. Um, once we get a personal best, I'll be happy. We get to the medal stand because it's very competitive out there. Everybody is coming out to win. It's very competitive. Once you get you know a personal best, you know I'll be happy as I said. But um, get to the medal stand. You know it will be you know, much more joy for the athletes and the country in general. But um, we're looking forward to do our best out there and to make Grenada proud. Nicholas says he's confident that Charles and Smith will perform with merit in Paris, noting that their work ethic and attitude were positive throughout the preparation program. Nicholas also believes that the achievement of both Smith and Charles will serve as a motivation for other para-athletes to not shy away from competition. What is happening right now? Is a test is testimony to you know what's to come. I think that is you know what you know Aishana and and Tyler will be doing in Paris would inspire other Paralympics Paralympians to come forward and you know come out of the closet because what we've noticed is a lot of persons with disability you know have been staying away from. A lot of events because of society stigma in society. So I believe that you know what they're doing would inspire a lot of young persons to come forward and start working on some sort of recreational or sporting events that could push them to the next level, challenge them, you know, to do things outside of what they are accustomed doing. Alvin Clowden, Secretary of the Grenada Paralympics Committee, will lead the Grenada delegation as Chief of Mission. While in Paris, Mr. Clowden is scheduled to attend several meetings and functions as General Secretary of the GPC, with the goal of increasing friendly relationships with other sports federations within the Paralympic movement. The team is expected to be back on 10 September 2024. Moving now to news of chess, the Grenada Chess Federation has selected 12-member squad to participate in the upcoming 45th Chess Olympiad in Budapest, Hungary. The Chess Olympiad, which runs from 10th to 23rd September 2024, represents the most prestigious event on the global calendar of the International Chess Federation, the world governing body for chess. The Olympiad is expected to bring together over 2,000 participants from 200 countries. 
The FID has recently completed the process of approving all 12 members of the team to participate in the Olympiad. The inaugural Grenada chess squad making history comprises five male and five female players, each total in 10, and two non-playing captains, one for the male and the other for the female team. The male team comprises Carlyle Glean Jr. as non-playing captain, Jenard Roberts, Renil Gilbert, Valdemir Mendes, and Javon James, and Tyler Thomas. While the female team comprises Dr. Dennis Ball as non-playing captain, Coach Acacia Lewis, Bernal Chaitan, Naziah James, Rokisha Flanders, and Terrell Frank. The female team benefited from a special three-month FID-sponsored and organized training session from March to June this year, designed to specifically promote women in chess. It was conducted by Dr. Baugh, a FID-certified coach from South Africa. All five female players bound for Budapest participated in the three-month training session aimed at preparing them for the 45th Olympiad. Significantly, the female team consists of players who are all students spread over primary and secondary schools and the T.M. Marishaw Community College. Eight-year-old Terrell Frank and 11-year-old Naziah James, the youngest players, are both students of Our Lady Help of Christians, formerly Bolio RC School. Achizia Lewis attends St. Mark's Secondary School, and Rakisha Flanders and Bernal Chaitan are first and second year students, respectively, of Tam CC. On the male team, both Roberts and Mendes are secondary school teachers. Gilbert and Thomas attend the Tam CC, and James attends the Presentation Brothers College. The GCF looks forward to an explosion of chess in schools post Budapest Olympiad. Moving now to news of netball, Netball Grenada is making a clarion call to the private and public sector to organize the netball teams early, as plans are underway for hosting of the Intersector Netball Tournament in 2024. The tournament start date is confirmed for Saturday, October 12, 4 p.m. at the Tanti Netball Facility. The Intersector Netball Tournament's objective is to create a more harmonious relationship between employees of the public and private sector. For further information, please dial the following numbers. 406-6448-457-3689 or 404-0125. And finally, with news of basketball, as the Spice Island Invitational Basketball Action comes to a close, Garvin Warwick, founder of the visiting Spartan City Basketball Club, who has had wins in the two encounters against St. Mark's Titans and St. Andrew's Basketball Federation, says sports plays a pivotal role in shaping and molding the minds of our youth. Sport is... Um, teaches you things like adversity, team spirit, team um, participation, understanding how to, to work together as a team for one common goal. And that's something that you use across your life as a person, as an individual. Discipline is one of the key pillars that sports brings out of any young man or woman that participates. Because at the end of the day, sometimes you know, some of the better players, when you look at their demographic, where they come out from geographically, they, they come out some of the rougher, tougher areas and, and they look up to coaches. That's why they say coaches are not just mentors, they are teachers, they are father figures. Because we, sport plays an important role of instilling those values in them. And I found in Trinidad there was a need to really develop the fundamental skill sets um, across the board. And even when we started Spartan City, we realized that fundamentally across Trinidad and Tobago, there was a need for some more development at the very tender ages of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so we have been continuously working very hard to develop uh, the basketball. And of course, outside of basketball, in terms of Spartan City, we host some of the bigger tournaments locally called Basketball Fiesta, where the clubs with the different age groups, U10, U12, U14, U15, U18, U19, could actually compete. One of the members of Spartan City on the 20 team is 16-year-old William Francis, who has been playing the sport for the past 10 years. Really, it's my second time traveling with Spartan City, and it's been a good experience so far, and hoping to keep it so. The games have been competitive so far. My team and I just doing what we can to secure our wins. And me personally, I found that I could have played a little better in both games. But we'll see what happens this afternoon. What separates you from the others? Well, first of all, my height. I of the defensive side. Um. I mainly get, you know, stops to like lead up to the offense where the shorter, faster guards, you know, the more they scoring. Warwick also holds the position of director of the next level performance. In his capacity as director at the next level performance, 
Warwick will spearhead the elite camp on Saturday at the Library in New Facility. He says his passion for the sport as a former basketballer has increased over the years, along with his love and interest in the game to help others develop. Coming out of, of, of the basketball tournament, we have selected as next level performance and looked at a number of young talented athletes um, that we have seen uh, between the ages of, of course, 15 to 20. But of course, we have extended the invitation to the National Association to facilitate kids up to the ages of 22. Um, because the intention of Next Level Performance is really to bridge that gap of um, making visible our athletes in the Caribbean region to the US, Canada, as well as European coaches to be able to scout for scholarships. I mean, at the end of the day, Next Level Performance is really a, an app, it's a technology-based platform that allows athletes to become visible to those coaches. It's really about bridging the gap between, as I said, US, Canada, Europe, to the Caribbean region. The players, he says, will be coached in shooting, dribbling, transition drills to include ball handling and defending. We go into some whole court scrimmages with, of course, the elite athletes because you're playing with a team now and your team may be strong or weak. But what we're doing is pulling the best talent out of Grenada and we're going to put them to play uh, in two teams and we're going to look and really build profiles. So what we're going to do, what is the takeaway for these athletes is that we're going to build profiles. Their profiles will have things like their height, their ability to jump, um, what are some of their skill sets based on what we see from the Next Level platform. And then uh, they will get a video profile that will be housed on our application, our app, that they could download from the Google or the iOS Play um, Store, which allows them to now take that link and share to any coach, any parent, any family member that gives a one-stop shop of their skill sets. The app or the application also allows for you to enter any newspaper clippings that you have, your transcript. So, I mean, the idea is really if a coach is interested in you and they click on this link, they will get all of the relevant information. For the GI Sports Roundup, I am Sherian Noel. Thank you, Sherian. That concludes the GIS News for Friday, August 16th, 2024. I am Chris Ann Mitchell saying thank you for joining us.